Some of you who've been following me for a while may remember a video I made on Irish weapon laws where I went through a piece of Irish legislation that outlawed some bizarre weaponry in the 90s. A very common theme in the list was what I guess you would call martial arts weaponry, uh, the sort of thing that you would see ninjas use in movies and games. And it made me wonder, what was happening in Ireland in the 90s? Well, I'm still not really sure, but there was definitely something going on, as I recently discovered Ireland's first, and to my knowledge, only kung fu movie released in 1998. I mean, I guess all this martial arts stuff is just an artifact from the worldwide fascination with ninjas in the 80s. It's possible all those laws put in place in the early 90s were just politicians reacting to what they had seen in movies in the years previous. And I also think it's likely that this movie was largely inspired by the creator's younger days, seeing these martial arts focused action flicks a decade or two earlier. That creator was James Bennett. Having a love of martial arts and action movies and wanting to star in them himself, James Bennett conceived the movie Fatal Deviation as a sort of proof of concept or audition tape to show off what he was capable of. With basically no budget at all, he got together with his friends to create Fatal Deviation, which has since gone on to be regarded as one of the worst films of all time. Oh dear. The film starts with Jimmy Bennett. Yes, he plays himself. Jimmy introduces us to a cinematic technique that we'll see used often in this film. That is, delivering your lines like the cretins in school who had to read with their finger under the words. This has been my home for 10 years. Every day I train to be as good a martial artist as my father. I am a man now and it's time I went home. I need to discover who I am, what it is I should do, and what happened to my father. Jimmy leaves the reform school and travels down the road. It was either a very foggy day when they were filming this, or they made a balls of the camera settings. I should mention that this movie was shot in the town of Trim in Meath. It's a fairly small rural town, which really emphasizes the Irishness of the movie, which is maybe an odd stylistic direction for a kung fu movie, but it's nice to see in a film, to be taken to this setting that's almost never explored in movies. It's a novelty just seeing a story unfold in a place we haven't seen in a million other movies. Jimmy comes across what I suppose is supposed to be his old home, now in shambles, and begins to tidy up the place. Picking up a Buddha statue, he has flashbacks of his now dead father. We cut to Lundus Supermarket. I honestly love seeing Ireland in the 90s because I was so young, my memories of it are very foggy. It's like seeing a dream realized on the screen. Anyways, these two hoodlums are acting the maggot and we're introduced to Lundus employee Nicola, who's building a tower of toilet paper, which looks like it's just an accident waiting to happen. I mean, customers have to get their shopping trolleys past this. They're, they're bound to hit. Jimmy also enters Lundus, probably for a lovely, lovely chicken roll. The two blackguards start messing with the toilet tower and Nicola asks them to stop or they'll have to pay for it, which is a fairly strict store policy considering it's not like you're going to damage the toilet rolls by knocking them over. You're very brave to be harassing young women. Yeah, Jimmy saves the day by enacting violence and knocking over the tower anyways, which is really a worse result than if you had just left the two Egypts to their devices. Nicola knows better than to make Jimmy pay for the now destroyed tower. Now we're introduced to crime boss Mr. Lachlan, who is just the embodiment of every owl lad ever. I'm not paying you to sit around here on your arse smoking. No, boss. Here! To the ridge! Yes, boss. His acting is a little stiff, but we'll forgive his discomfort being taken out of his natural environment of the pub. 
Jimmy's cleaning up the house when he finds his dad's old pyjamas. We get a flashback to Jimmy being bullied in school and his dad teaching him martial arts so he can break the bully's spine and render him a paraplegic. We cut to Nicola walking home where she is stopped by Mr. Lachlan's goons who harass her to go out on a date with Mikey, Lachlan's son. Jimmy shows up as well as a monk watching from the distance. Who the fuck are you? I don't think the girl needs help across the road. Why don't you boy scouts go and play in the woods? You little... Jimmy flips this lad over this knee-high wall and we learn from the outtakes that this legitimately injured him and the little yelp he let out wasn't acting. You're right. I'm not doing that. I'm not jumping. I'm not doing that again. Yeah. Come on. Thanks. I. It's okay. I know what it's like to be bullied. All righty then. Lachlan's goons come back to his crib, sporting some injuries. We also get our first glimpse of Lachlan's son, Mikey, while Mr. Lachlan very clumsily reveals the film's premise. What happened to you? Guess who's back in town? Young Jimmy Bennett, after 10 years. Why don't we get him to work for us? Working for us? Why not? Wouldn't it be ironic to have the son of the man I killed working for us? I fucking love this old lad. Have him stop by and visit me tonight. Wouldn't that be sweet? Jimmy's working out and to be fair to him, he is in good shape. Nicholas stops by and gives him an apple tart. Hi. Hi. Um, I just called by to say thank you. Well, uh, come in. I'm sorry, the place is still a bit of a mess. Here, this is for you. Thanks. I baked it myself. Um, look, I've, I've got to go. Wait, uh, can I see you again? I don't know. Can you? See ya. After this scene, I'm not so sure that Jimmy should be living by himself with no supervision. Uh, seems like he should maybe have a caregiver. When Jimmy comes back into the house, he's greeted by two of Lachlan's goons who take him to meet with Lachlan, who offers Jimmy a job as hired muscle. Jimmy doesn't seem to care either way, and I'm not really sure he understood the conversation. We've established he's not exactly a social butterfly. I hear you're good with your hands. Yeah. Do you like manual work? It's okay. I have an opening for someone with your talents. Would you like to work for me? I don't know. Didn't you see all those fancy cars outside? It's a well-paid job. Think it over and get back to me. On his way out, Mikey accosts Jimmy and tells him to stay away from Nicola. The next scene is Jimmy and Nicola at the fairground. It goes on for a very long time for some reason. There's nothing said, it's just a montage, but it lasts longer than the previous, more important scene. Later that night, Jimmy has a flashback of his father being killed as he watches. <laughs> We are introduced to the next plot device, the Bjaltana tournament. Bjaltana is like the Gaelic May Day and we learn that the tournament is a fighting tournament. Lachlan wants his man Seagull to win, who is currently over in Hong Kong. It's explained why the crime boss would care about winning the tournament. 
Why is this tournament so important to us? Because, stupid, it makes us look good. The tournament is very important to people around here. If we win this, we take control of this town. Well, I didn't say it was a good explanation. Mikey calls up Nicola, but she blows him off, and next we see her frolicking about in the woods with Jimmy. They come upon a monastery, which is attended by monks, but it's like they're from the 7th century. I don't understand. Neither does Jimmy. Who are you people? The question is, who are you? What are you talking about? I know my past. Do you know yours? Come on, Nicholas, we're leaving. This guy's crazy. The next scene is actually a very realistic depiction of going to a pub in Ireland. Sorry, no entry. What's the problem? Lads? I just want to have a drink. Sorry, you little bollocks. I said no entry. Well, I haven't done anything wrong, lads. Listen, I don't think you heard me right. You're not getting in, and that's that. <sighs> now look here. This whole lot of fucking minutes, right? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things you could say about that scene, but we'll just accept it without comment. The film follows up strong with what is probably my favourite scene in the whole movie. Just listen to Owl Lad Lachlan's delivery in this scene. What the fuck is this? Beat up my men, we? Who did this? Bennett. Bennett? Yeah, he turned down your offer. The outtakes revealed that he had to do this multiple times, and this was the best take. Most of the actors in this film deliver their lines like they're reading them, which is impressive when the lines are obviously committed to memory. It's like they memorise themselves reading the lines instead of the lines themselves. But Lachlan is by far the worst, and as such, he's my favourite character. As soon as this guy's on screen, any illusion of this being a movie is completely shattered. You're not watching a character you're watching a real owl lad pretending he's a gangster. The scenes with him in them are more akin to filming your granddad doing impressions, and ironically, it's the most entertaining part of the film. I just love this owl lad. 
Jimmy is having his wounds seen to when one of the monks shows up and gives him an invitation to the Bialtana tournament. Guess what? I've been invited to a tournament. The Bialtana tournament? Yeah. What's that? God, to get into that is such a huge honour. How did you get it? The, the monk. The, the monk. The monk. Oh, Lachlan and Mikey aren't going to be happy about that. Jimmy starts training when he's awkwardly interrupted by this monk. Meet me tomorrow by the Seven Oaks. Why? Because I'm going to work with you. <laughs> Why would I want to work with you, old man? Your father said that the first time I met him. What do you know about my father? Meet me tomorrow at midday. So naturally, Jimmy goes out to train with the monk. Expect the unexpected. But I was just... Your training begins tomorrow. The monk starts training Bennett, but it seems like more of an excuse to abuse him. How would this old Irish monk know martial arts anyway? It's never explained and it doesn't make sense. He's dressed up like he's a thousand years old, which is a visual cue, right? He's a monk from times gone past, but that doesn't make any sense. He's a monk! What's he going to teach you? How to build towers to hide from Vikings? It'd be one thing if he was dressed as an old samurai or something. I mean, it still wouldn't make sense. Why does this centuries-old character exist in an otherwise normal 90s Ireland? But at least it might explain his martial arts knowledge. The training scenes are interspersed with Jimmy taking Nicola on dates that I would have conceived as a teenager. He even takes her down by the river and flexes on her by skipping stones. <laughs> That's a classic. Many a young lass has fallen prey to that one. They're having a little picnic and it's pretty awkward. Mm. Tell me a bit about yourself. Really Jimmy? You've been spending all this time with her and you're only now asking her to tell you a little bit about herself? You should have already gone in for the kill after date one or two. Man, come on, e even Teenage Geekser was better than this. Lachlan's men come and get Bennett, but of course he kicks the shit out of them. He grabs a gun from one of them and escapes with Nicola. The goons are in hot pursuit. Jimmy opens fire on this motorist, but he's not chasing Jimmy like all the others. He's heading in the opposite direction. Are we sure this isn't just a random lad travelling down the road? Jimmy lets Nicola off the bike and kills a few members of the actual gang before Nicola is kidnapped and brought to Mikey. Bennett then travels home and finds a note. He goes out and finds the monk under attack by Lachlan's goons, but he manages to save him. Then he shows the monk the note. It's upside down at first and it takes the monk a good second or two to realise this. It says, loose or else. What am I going to do? Well, what am I going to do? You must win the tournament. I can't. They have Nicola. If you win the tournament, you'll break their power. But what about Nicola? Don't worry, we'll get her back. Bennett goes off down a country lane to contemplate his situation and daydream about Nicola, including a scene where they're having relations, but we never saw this in the movie and it didn't really seem like they're very far into the courtship, so is this a memory or a fantasy? Jimmy seems pleased with it anyways. This strengthens his resolve and he tells the monk he'll join the tournament. Then they start training. The next scene is Lachlan's henchman, Seagull, back from Hong Kong. He touches down in this airstrip, which is actually just a field. Big fella he is. Welcome back, Seagull. How did it go in Hong Kong? Everything is done. Good. I have another little job for you. What is it? I will tell you later. Lachlan reminds me a lot of Palpatine from Star Wars Episode 3. Jimmy trains some more in the lead up to the Bialtana tournament, which is held by the monks in some sort of dungeon. Warriors, welcome. Each decade we celebrate May with the Feast of Bialtana. This has been handed down through centuries. It is in this tradition that we are gathered here. In keeping with the ancient ways, there are no rules. Let the Bialtana tournament begin! What ancient ways? Bialtana is a festival, not a combat sport. The tournament begins and the fighting is a sort of a mix of martial arts and professional wrestling. There are a surprising number of entrants, but three stand out. 
Bennett, obviously, Seagull, obviously, and this big fucker whose name I can't make out. Also, before every match, this tiny little monk, uh, he might be a gnome actually, stands between the two men as they square off, puts his hand on their chests and commences the bout by reminding us They are no rules. This concludes the first day of the tournament. We get a quick scene of Nicola and her captors. Hope you're better at running than you are at gambling. I am the god of gamblers. Because you won't be doing too much gambling when Jimmy gets it. <laughs> then Bennett asks the monk about his da. Tell me about my father. What do you want to know? How did you know him? He was my first student. How? He was one of us for a short while. A monk? Yes. Not really a big reveal or anything, we kind of already know all we need to drive the plot. The second day of the tournament commences. Once again, there's a lot of time dedicated to these scenes. We eventually come down to the big fucker and Seagull. Seagull's modus operandi up until now has just been no-selling his opponent's attacks, and he fucks up the big fucker who starts convulsing and spitting teeth. Do the authorities know these monks are holding this event? The crowd here is fucking bloodthirsty and egg Seagull into continuing the attack, but he very mercifully backs off, only striking again when he's forced to defend himself. As evil henchmen go, he's a fairly decent chap. The final round now is Seagull and Bennett. Seagull kicks the shite out of Bennett and gets him into this hole, so I'm not sure what this is, but it doesn't look very effective. Maybe they just weren't sure how to do an armbar. Bennett gets out of it by biting Seagull, which is a fairly dastardly move. I mean, I know there's no rules, but it's not really a good guy thing to do, is it? Bennett mounts a counter-offensive for a while before getting a hiding that leaves him on the verge of consciousness. In his drowsy state, he sees the flashback of his father once again, and finally remembers his killer's identity. It was Lachlan, to no one's surprise. I don't know why we're still going on about the father. I mean, we figured this shit out ages ago. Bennett is brought back to his senses by the monks chanting. He's chanting the name of the movie, but we don't understand what this term means in the context of the film. I guess it's a fighting technique or something. Who knows? Bennett then beats Siegel, and two of Lachlan's goons in attendance make a break for it to inform their boss that Bennett's fucked up their poorly thought out plans. Bennett catches up to them just as they make the phone call. The next scene takes place at the quarry where Nicola is being kept, but Mikey's stationed armed guards all over the shop. Bennett comes in absolutely bombing it down this lane and flips the car. Apparently this was actually not intentional and the outtakes show Bennett was lucky to walk away uninjured. He narrowly escapes the car blowing up and hang on a minute, he's wearing a shirt. Did he go back home and get changed before coming here? Why did he choose a fucking work shirt? There goes the driver's license. Unusual one-liner there. Jimmy sneaks up on this guard, who I guess is partially sighted or something. He takes cover from the guard up on the ridge and then somehow sneaks by him. How did the guy not see him leave cover? Then Jimmy has another shit one-liner. Enjoy the slide. Where did these one-liners suddenly come out of? And enjoy the slide? Really? That's not even funny. Jimmy then has to eat his words as he is forced to enjoy the slide. And I want to talk about this scene a bit. Why is he racking the slide over and over? Is there a malfunction? Also, this is one of several scenes during this shootout where it looks as if Jimmy is reacting to being shot, but isn't. I guess he's just jumping away from the fire. There's this ridiculous scene where he's dual firing pistols and flicking his wrist every time he fires. Is he trying to curve the bullet or something? He shoots this lad a few times and gives him a kick for good measure. He finally makes it to the caravan where Nicola is being kept. Let her go! Put the gun down! Let the girl go! Put the gun down or she dies!
Well, you No! Sick Ride the Lightning t-shirt, by the way. Mikey then shows up, but he's distracted by Nicola and Jimmy snaps his fucking neck. We cut to Nicola and Bennett having a celebratory picnic. Let's hope we don't get interrupted this time. <laughs> Close your eyes. Why? Ah, go on. Close your eyes. You killed my son. Now I am going to kill you, just as I killed your father. <laughs> You killed my father. Now I'm going to kill you, just like I killed your son. And that's the end of the fucking movie. First off, Lachlan's head must be in absolute bits after shooting him point blank like that. I'm not sure what this gun is, but I think it's some sort of shotgun. So I just imagine red pulp where his face used to be. Even when I was a teenager, I had the good sense to know you shouldn't be doing anything that's going to haunt your date for the rest of her life. Does she really still want to see Jimmy after seeing him blow an old man's fucking head off? Secondly, and this isn't the only example of it, but this final kill is murder. Not self-defense, you disarmed the old man and you even recited your little poem and then you shot him. That's an execution. I'm not saying it's not morally justifiable. I basically have no moral compass whatsoever so I don't care if you're morally justified or not. Do what you want. But I don't think the law will see it that way. And speaking of the law, where are they? You're telling me there's all these shootouts and people being riddled with bullets in Trim in County Meath and no one bats an eye. Jimmy's going to fucking prison and he's not coming back out. There it is. It's sometimes regarded as one of the worst films ever made, but honestly, for what it is, I enjoyed it. And if you're ever having a drunk movie night with your friend, I'd even recommend it. James Bennett did go on to star in legitimate action movies and he's even got to work with some of his heroes like Jean-Claude Van Damme and well, it probably wasn't because of this but I'm glad things worked out for him. I poked a lot of fun at the movie but really I'm glad it exists. I'm glad Bennett made this. As bad as it is, I really enjoyed watching it. My life is richer from the experience. Honestly, it makes me want to make something. Happy in the knowledge that no matter how bad it is, someone out there will get some enjoyment from it. It's inspiring and I hope you feel the same. And guess what? James Bennett has confirmed Fatal Deviation 2, which will supposedly be shot in Ireland in 2020, this year. Now I haven't heard anything about it since, so I don't know if it's already underway or if it's fallen through, but if anybody knows James Bennett, let him know that if he's looking for an extra, I'm available. And that will be all from me. Stay safe, folks. What the fuck is this? Beat up my men. <laughs> Beat up on my men. My, my men. That's it. Okay, ready? Have you had the flower? Have you had the flower? What the fuck is this? Beat up on my men, we. One more time. Damn it! Do I understand this? Damn it! Damn it! Like that, ready? Add in. Action. Who did this? Ben. Ben? Yeah, he turned that around. Ben? No. Action. Who did this? Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's it! That's it! <laughs>